Today we are doing a tune up on a C12 on highway truck engine. We are going to be adjusting all the valve lash, injector heights, as well as the jake brake, or as Caterpillar calls it, the compression brake. To the back of the engine on the flywheel housing, this is the opposite side of the starter motor, you will have a plate with two bolts, we need to remove that plate, and a little plug with a hex head, we need to remove that also. To do all these adjustments we need to find the top centre position for number one cylinder, aka top dead centre compression stroke. People use the acronym TDC1. We are going to use one of those bolts that hold the plate on and insert it in the hole that the plug was in. There is a timing hole on the flywheel, we need to line that up with the hole the plug come out of. Now it does not fit perfectly, the hole is a lot bigger so do the best you can trying to keep it centered while pushing the bolt onto the flywheel. You only need to gently apply pressure as you bar the engine around as soon as the timing hole in the flywheel lines up with the bolt it will slot straight in. Now when I started on the engine I didn't know where the valve train was sitting and there's a shortcut for finding TDC so you only have to turn the engine a minimal distance but there's a bit to talk about regarding reading the valve positions so I'm going to leave that for another video. Look in the description, there's a link for the engine barring tool I'm using if you want to get one. We need to turn the engine over in a counterclockwise rotation looking from the flywheel end. So if your C12 is on a truck, look through the inspection plate at the bottom of the bell housing, start cranking on your ratchet and you'll be able to work out which way you need to turn your ratchet to turn the engine in the right direction. It's important to turn the engine in the right direction to take the backlash out of the timing gears. Next we need to remove the valve cover over cylinder 1 and 2 to check if we are at TDC1 or TDC6. This truck is a Kenworth T401 and to get to that valve assembly we, need, we have to remove the air filter box as well as the intake pipe from the after cooler to the engine and stuff like that. When I get this valve cover off you'll see the engine has three rocker arms per cylinder. The long one is for the exhaust, the short one is for the intake and the fat one is for the injector. The pretzel shaped looking thing sitting on top of the rocker arms is the jake brake assembly. There is three assemblies, one per two cylinders and it's a lot easier to do your valve lash with them removed. If you put your fingers on the rocker arms and give them a shake back and forth they should be loose if the engine is at TDC1. As you can see these are not, they are firm so that means we are at top dead centre for number six cylinder. Now it doesn't matter if you start these adjustments on TDC1 or TDC6 but for the purpose of the video we'll start with TDC1. So back to the flywheel, take the bolt out and turn the engine another 360 degrees and install the timing bolt. Inlet and exhaust rocker arm on cylinder 1 are loose, so now we know we're at TDC1. We need to take the jake brakes off, unplug the wires for each solenoid, be careful with the wires, they get hard and brittle being inside the engine. There's three jake brake assemblies, one jake brake controls two cylinders, just a side note, if you wanted to test that your jake brake was working, some jake brake solenoids you can push down the centre of it and it will actuate the jake brake while the engine is running. That way you can manually check to see if you've got an electrical problem or you've got a solenoid problem. There's two nuts and a bolt that hold the jake brake in. Undo the two nuts with an 18mm socket and the bolt takes a 16mm. Just be careful not to drop anything and uh, they should just lift straight out after a bit of a wiggle and put them on a clean bench. They're not too heavy, they probably weigh about 10 pounds or 5 kilos. I always try and keep them together and put them back on the engine the way they come out. Um, it doesn't really matter, you can mix them up if you wanted to. We'll be adjusting inlet and exhaust on number one, inlet on number two, exhaust on number three, that's the injector rocker arm. We're not doing that one yet. Uh, do an inlet on number four 
and exhaust rocker arm on cylinder five. We're looking at cylinder one again. Intake is the short rocker arm, exhaust is the longer one. The valve clearance on the inlet side is 15 thou and the exhaust side is 25 thou. I like to just talk in thou when we're doing this because it's just a lot easier than talking millimetres. You need to loosen the nut on the adjuster screw. It's a 16 mil nut. Loosen both of them because we're going to adjust both of them on number one. Starting on your inlet rocker arm, place your 15 thou filler gauge in between the rocker arm and the valve bridge. Using a flat head screwdriver, tighten up the adjuster screw until you feel a slight drag on your filler gauge. When I say a slight drag, I mean the filler gauge can be pulled between the gaps smoothly, not tight enough to shudder and not loose enough so that you don't feel any resistance. Once you're happy with that, tighten the adjuster nut firm. And it's the same process with the exhaust rock around, but you're using a 25 thou filler gauge. Again, when you have a slight drag on your filler gauge, tighten up the adjuster nut. You can lock the nut off and complete it with just a spanner, but you really should torque the nut to specifications. Uh, with a torque wrench, the torque specs for these is 25 foot pounds. After you've torqued your adjuster nut to 25 foot pounds, it's good practice to torque strive it with a paint pen. It stops you from getting confused on which one you've done, especially if you get pulled off the job. Always double check your valve clearance after you've torqued the nut, just in case the screw moved on you. It usually doesn't, but just in case. So just a quick recap. We adjusted inlet rocker arm on number one cylinder and on number one we did the exhaust as well on number two we did the inlet on number three we did the exhaust only on number four the cylinder we did the inlet only and on number five we did the exhaust only so now you would bar your engine over take your timing bolt out bar your engine over 360 degrees put your pin back in and then you would start on um, number two exhaust. You would adjust that. You would adjust three inlet. You would adjust four exhaust. You would adjust five inlet and on number six inlet and exhaust. And that is how you adjust your valve lash. Now if that's all you want to do, you can put your Jake brake assembly back on and away you go. But there's a part two to this where we do our injector heights and we do our jack brake clearance. I really recommend watching that because if you're going to do an adjustment you might as well do the whole lot and that would be a proper tune up. Check out my playlist for part two and if you like this video click and subscribe.